Hello and welcome. My name is David Brannigan. I'm communications manager of Fingal Chamber and we're pleased to be holding the local area business forums with Fingal County Council. The aim of this virtual series is to give businesses an update on the local authority supports and plans for economic development, enterprise and tourism. This webinar will feature an address from Fingal County Council's Chief Executive, Anne-Marie Farley, and a presentation from the Director of Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development, Imro Gorman. These briefings will then also be followed by a Q&A session. If you have any questions throughout, please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom toolbar and we'll do our best to get to them. But well, first, to address attendees, I'd like to invite the Fingal Chamber President, Andrea Malloy, to say a few words. Andrea? Thank you, David. Good morning and what a really beautiful morning it is. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Andrea Malloy and I'm President of the Fingal Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us for our local business forum in conjunction with Fingal County Council. As the region's largest business organization, Fingal Chamber helps businesses of all sizes to grow and develop by providing members with opportunities to influence policy, connect with businesses and professionals, train their workforce, promote their business and trade internationally. The Chamber is committed to promoting local economic development and enhancing the economic prosperity and quality of life across the region whilst ensuring local businesses have a competitive advantage. The primary services the Chamber offers to, include, for, to members include advocacy and lobbying support, where we liaise with government departments, engage with policy makers and the media, and directly represent on industry and community committees. The Chamber also coordinates upskilling and training programmes. This is provided through Fingal Chamber Skillnet, where we operate and promote subsidized training determined by business needs, customized and delivered locally. We're also very proactive with our networking and events program, where we host regular government and key stakeholder briefings, a business networking series and a variety of social events. The Fingal Chamber website also has an exclusive members information center. This allows members to network online profile their business, share news updates, events, job vacancies, and special offers with the business community. Over a year ago, like many, our operations were forced to change, but the Chamber quickly adapted to working with COVID-19. As the Chamber staff moved seamlessly to working virtually for most of our services, we reacted to the new reality by changing our focus to helping businesses survive. Looking ahead, we have lots happening over the coming months. If you are already a Chamber member, I encourage you to check out and join our upcoming activities, which are listed on the Fingal Chamber website. If you're not yet a Chamber member, you can find out more information online at fingalchamber.ie or by contacting a member of our team to find out how membership can benefit your business specifically. I hope you find today's event useful and on behalf of the Chamber and myself, I wish you and your business every success in the future. I would also like to sincerely thank Fingal County Council Chief Executive Anne-Marie Farrelly and Director of Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development, Imro Gorman, for joining us today. Thank you and I'll hand you back to our host, Fingal Chamber Communications Manager, David Brannigan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. I think we'll jump right into it this morning. I'd first like to invite Fingal County Council's Chief Executive, Amri Farley, to speak. Amri. Good morning, everybody, and, and thank you, Andrea and David. I am really pleased that Fingal County Council has had the opportunity to speak with businesses this week. This is our third forum um, and fin the final one. Um, I'm glad to speak to the businesses of, of Hoth and Malahide. Um, I've had a different start to my role as Chief Executive. I haven't been able to meet as many of the businesses as I would have liked to. Um, our, my first year, I suppose, being principally about what was happening with COVID um, and trying to keep the county a good place to, to live, work and do business and indeed to visit. And I know particularly the Malahide Hoth area has many visitors and right now I think Hoth and Malahide are as busy as they've ever been in terms of the number of people that want to travel there and enjoy the coast and enjoy all the other wonderful attractions. This morning I want to look at I suppose Fingal County Council's reaction to COVID and how we've managed ourselves through it and um, I want to spend a little time on the Fingal development plan which has been reviewed 
at the moment, we're at the very first stage of that review. Um, I want to also focus on some of our infrastructure investment in the county. Um, and then as well, I suppose, linked to living and working in the county, housing is still a key issue for us. And I spend a little time on that. Um, and then I suppose the summer of 21 and what it will be like for all of us um, and what we're doing to address our responsibilities for, for this year, which will be a different summer again, I think. So just focusing on COVID, I suppose the first thing to say is we've been open throughout. We've been an essential service, um, but it has been more difficult to deliver those services. Um, we had a digital transformation plan um, commenced before COVID. That was to be a three year plan. And ultimately, we ended up rolling that out over a three month period. So now we're in a position to have almost all our office based staff working from home. Um, and an indication of that is that in the average month, we receive about 200,000 telephone calls. And those calls at the moment are answered from people's homes at their kitchen table, many of them. And that's what we've been doing since March. And that allowed us to take on new services, um, which were part of the COVID response. So the likes of community call, which local authorities were given responsibility for, but which we led very much in cooperation with other um, bodies and agencies such as Fingal Chamber, who was a great help to us in rolling out support to those people who needed help at the, the worst of the pandemic. So there was a lot of fear that people would be left behind, people living on their own who were asked to cocoon. They needed to have those supports. So we took 1,200 calls in relation to that. And that meant volunteers knocking on people's doors, delivering the help that they needed, be it groceries or, or medicines or whatever it might have been. Um, so there was a real call to action and many of our volunteers, many of um, the GA clubs, for example, answered that very quickly. And the supports were put in place once and then delivered every week. You know, so the one call delivered the support that was needed for as long as it was needed by the individual. So, you know, that was a real sign of, of volunteerism working in the county. And, you know, if we can capture that going forward for many other things, it'll be to all our benefit. I mentioned new initiatives and I suppose as a business I'm sure you, you're, you're anxious to have some relief in terms of the difficulties you are facing and that's the purpose of the rates waiver which um, is now extended to the end of the second quarter um, and you know we don't know exactly what will happen in quarter three and that's dependent on the reopening plan to be announced next week. The restart grant um, again we operated on the philosophy of getting money into your accounts as quickly as possible. And EMA will focus on our work in that area. And thanks to EMA and the team who basically invested all the resources for a particular period in doing their, just that, you know, trying to process as efficiently as possible and getting that money out. So, you know, we've had a lot of staff who had to redeploy into various areas depending where the biggest priority was. Um, we indeed had some staff that redeployed to the HSE. That was small in number, but um, again, right now, if there's help needed in the vaccination centres, um, all public authorities will be um, expected to deliver that help, which is good. You know, we really want to help to get the country through this, um, and any support we can give as a pub public body, we will. Um, in relation to the digital transformation, again. Um, that doesn't suit all our work. You know, a lot of our work is still out in the ground. Um, half our workforce are outdoor staff who are busier than ever. I mean, our public and recreational spaces have never been in more demand. And you know that better than most um, in terms of Malahide and Holt, because that is the busiest area. Lot, some challenges, you know, people literally have nothing to do for the first time. When a young person says that to you, you know, you kind of have to accept it. The sports clubs are not open. So they are going to be congregating in public spaces. Um, and for the most part, they do that without much um, interruption or disruption to the local area. But at times, and it's not only young people, there has been antisocial behavior and we've worked closely with the guards in relation to that. We've also invested heavily on more operational staff on the ground. We've effectively been operating at peak summer levels since January. You know, that's that's where we were at. Um, and it's still difficult to keep up with the number of people out on the ground. We've invested heavily in bins, for example, a half a million investment in bins um, in order to, I suppose, remove any excuse for putting litter on the ground. Um, but litter at the end of the day is something that's in the wrong place. And if, if 
people are not using bins, they should be leaving no trace and bringing it home with them. So there's an element of enforcement and there's definitely an element of working with you, the business community, to try and um, strengthen our response in relation to that. Um, we have invested heavily again in public toilets. We're looking at summer 21 and making sure that we can do we do what we can in relation to having um, facilities available. Um, we're planning ahead for the Fingal Coastal Way, which I hope some of you have heard about by now because the first stage of the consultation is open at the moment, but that's going to transform the tourism offer in the county. It's going to lead to more visitors. It's going to be a, be of great value to our residents. Um, but we, I suppose both you and, and us as a council need to plan for that 34 kilometre route, which is actually along the coast, which means that I suppose it's unique in some respects. A lot of the greenways in across the country have some coastal parts of them, but there's nothing of that length available right now. So very exciting project, looking forward to, to getting it delivered. Um, I said I'd, I'd mentioned something about our infrastructure investment and um, that continued right throughout the pandemic. We, you know, insofar as we could, we tried to keep our business as normal. So we invested 160 million in the county last year and we're on target to invest in excess of 200 million this year in capital projects. And the type of capital projects that involves is the Green and Malahide, for example, that was completed last year at um, a cost of about a million euro. Um, also the Swords Cultural Quarter, where we're about to appoint an integrated design team and a big greenway program and a big housing program and some rejuvenation programs for some of our town centres, such as Bad Brigham. Um, so that work is design work I suppose is really suitable for home working so um, I was pleased that we were able to advance a little bit quicker on some of those projects because um, we were able to focus on them entirely. Um, linked to that of course is housing and I mean housing remains a key issue for me for, for government as well um, and, and I suppose Fingal has traditionally been a, a big housing provider in the Dublin region and in fact we led in housing delivery for the last decade across the country. Um, we have provided in excess of 6,000 housing solutions to people in need of social housing. Um, and that means people got keys to the door to those houses. They're not all, um, so the, the traditional social property, in fact, you know, obviously leasing and housing assistance payments pay, play a big part. But, you know, it gives people a home. So um, I, I think no matter what happens in the future, there will be a combination of solutions for, for this purpose. Please, that we've moved into the affordable housing area in recent months and our new scheme in Lusk will be the first of many where we're looking to deliver housing at it, that will be sold at a rate that matches the average wage, you know, so very closely linked to the reality of what people are earning in, in the country. So um, again, I expect that project to be in big demand, but there'll be more of them um, and we have many in the planning. We have site of about 1500 units to be delivered as traditional social housing in the coming years. And we have a number of big sites as well, where we work with the private sector to deliver um, a mix of housing, social, affordable and, and traditional private. Um, and there's about um, three and a half thousand units to come through that avenue in the coming years with a, a major announcement in relation to Donna and um, just recently where we hope to get that um, on site um, in, in the coming year. Um, the Fingal Coastal Way I think is very important to people who live in Malahide which sorry the the Broad Meadow Way, I should say, um, to link Malahide to Donna Bate, um, across the estuary. Again a lot of um, preliminary construction work happening there already you know a lot of those the surveys and, and other things that need to happen before you move to site. So again, we're, we're on target with that in terms of going to tender for a preferred contractor and um, working with Irish Rail in the process. So again, that'll link into the coastal way and ultimately there'll be a route from Hoth to north of Balbriggan, which um, will be available to all of us, hopefully, you know, in relative terms quite soon. Um, I mentioned the Fingal Development Plan, that's up for review at the moment, and I hope you will all participate. I know we dealt with the economy and the, the business side of the development plan in terms of what issues um, we're facing um, earlier in the week. That's a webinar that was broadcast on, I think it was Tuesday evening, but it's available or will be available shortly um, online to watch if you, if you missed it. 
And I suppose what we need to know is that we have enough zoned land for business across the county and in the right places and of the right type. So the zoning of land is the next stage of the development plan. But right now, I suppose trends in, in business, um, who wants to locate where that, um, that type of thing is very important. We have yielded a dividend from um, both COVID and internet shopping, for example, and um, Brexit, where we have a lot of warehousing has, has been developed, is continuing to be developed, mostly in the Dublin 15 area. But I'm conscious that retail has suffered a lot um, in, in the last year. And for the work I'm doing in, in relation to that is with government on the town centre first initiative, where, you know, we're looking at recovery plans on a town centre basis. Um, and that's for the, the short, medium and long term. You know, what can we do for our town centres to get them more active? What is the future town centres? How will they look? How do we get people to live and do business there um, and, and move back? I suppose in the reality of the, of the current economics um, and I suppose ultimately what supports we can give retail. So th that's exciting. And, and I suppose it's fair to say that um, there's a lot of initiatives underway to, I suppose, connect the overall program and hopefully deliver successful towns. The likes of um, the nighttime economy that Catherine Martin is working on, um, some public road projects right across the board, you know, um, our active travel unit, we have set up an active travel division in our in, in the council that works specifically on helping people to walk and cycle more safely to their destination, mm. be it a school, a shop, or work and um, some projects already delivered a bit of a, an adjustment for people you know people um i suppose maybe i suppose ultimately there'll be less room for the car trying to keep cars out of town centers is is a name um so <clears throat> so as we deliver that um those projects i suppose I'd, I'd ask for your support and to think of the longer term gain rather than the immediate issue um, and right now i suppose in terms of covid the advice is still walk and cycle where possible because that is the safest way of, of um, protecting yourself um, at the moment. So yeah, open to get that dividend in the long term and that it will stay with us. Um, that's an external investment though into the county and government are supporting it quite heavily. We have a 14 million euro investment this year, which ultimately secures the projects that we aim to deliver. So as we move to site, you'll see that um, investment coming in from government increasing all of the time as the projects cost more money, obviously, as, as we move to construct them. So that's good news for the county too. Um, I said I'd mention, look at summer 2021, and the reality is that I suppose we still are not certain exactly what the plans are for reopening, but we do anticipate a reopening quite soon. Um, what I understand is that it will be about the outdoor activities, you know, that's where people will be safest. Um, and I suppose while the vaccination program has been rolled out and, and while we understand exactly what the new normal is, that's what we will be aiming to support. Um, we are looking at, um, as I mentioned, recovery plans. So the, the aim is to look at recovery plans for town centres in the medium to long term, but there's an element of a recovery plan for this summer. How do we support trade? How do we get businesses open safely? Um, and we'll be available as we were before Christmas to assist in that regard. And Emer again will bring you through some of those issues. I have, um, I lead on the CCMA business committee. So on behalf of local government, I represent um, all local authorities at, at meetings in relation to COVID and also in relation to um, investment plans for the future. So uh, there are some um, pro exciting projects coming down the tracks. I think there will be further news next week when we move to the reopening plan. Um, but at the end of the day, I suppose the local supports and what help work um, at a local level are very important at this stage. I'm conscious we've never had more visitors in our towns and villages in Fingal, being quite lucky with the coast and, and other amenities. So it's about capturing um, the business that's associated with that. Um, we ourselves have had to spend more money during COVID. The likes of Malahide Castle and Newbridge Domain um, and Argillan. We've never had more visitors. There's been 2 million visitors into Malahide Domain in 2020. And it would seem that that number will be exceeded this year. Um, but the Malahide Castle itself has been closed for most of the year. And we've had to support the 
the operator, Shannon Heritage, who works on our behalf in order to ensure that the casino and Malai Castle, for example, um, will be ready and available to open when COVID circumstances allow. But that has come at a cost, but it's um, obviously very important attractions in our county. So, you know, it's a, it's a necessary cost. But um, I mentioned the level of activity we have in maintaining the operations of the county. There's no doubt um, we've had to invest more um, and we've tried to do that because we know when the reopening comes, that you'll be relying on us to have um, a high quality environment for, for your customers. So that's that's exactly the agenda we've been working to. Um, there's there's many more things I, I could speak about, but um, I'm conscious that of time. So I'm really pleased to be here, as I said earlier, happy to take any questions you have throughout the morning. Um, and if, if there's anything I haven't covered, please come back. I'd be pleased to come back in a little later on. So I'll hand you back to David. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Anne-Marie. Um, delighted you could join us and, and great to have you speak to the um, Holt Malahide and surrounding areas group this morning. Um, a reminder to everyone um, that if you do have any questions for Amory or for Emer um, or, for, or for the panel here this morning to please use the Q&A feature in the Zoom toolbar and we'll do our best at the end with the time we have to um, put them to uh, our panel. Um, next to address attendees is the Director of Economic Enterprise, Tourism and Cultural Development of Fingal County Council, Emer O'Gorman. Emer? Thanks very much, David, and good morning, everybody. I just want to say a very sincere thank you to Andrea and all the team at Fingal Chamber for inviting us to participate in these webinars. They've been really, really productive and useful. Um, so I'm going to just take you through a couple of the direct interventions that we have had ongoing in uh, Fingal County Council over the last 12 months, and then I suppose some of our plans for the future. So if you just bear with me now, I'll try and share my screen. So as Anne-Marie mentioned, um, part of our role is to continue to support business um, through the crisis of COVID. And a lot of our supports are those that we are channeling um, on behalf of central government. I suppose, so namely, it would be the rates waiver. And as Anne-Marie mentioned, that is running until the end of Q2 um, of this year. So far, we haven't had an indication as yet if that's going to be extended. Um, while my team haven't been directly involved with that, um, we were absolutely tasked with rolling out the restart grant last year when that was announced. Um, government have great ambition, they announced something on a Wednesday and you have to have it live on the Monday. Um, but I have to say I'm very pleased that our team rose to that challenge. Um, we repurposed, I suppose, mo most of my staff that work in the tourism side of the house into the restart grant um, administration side of things. So last year, in, in the first iteration of the grant, we, we paid 7.6 million to just over 1,500 businesses in Fingal. And then government, I suppose, changed the scheme and announced a new scheme called the Restart Plus grant. So we had another additional 20 million paid out to nearly uh, 2,000 businesses. The difference between the two schemes really was an expansion of the criteria. So the first one was quite restrictive. It was really for small and medium businesses. The second one allowed bigger Kind of in the more medium to larger scale businesses apply in it and avail of grant aid. But the real beauty of the scheme was that it wasn't prescriptive on what the money could be spent on. Um, it was really just a cash injection into businesses. So you could use it for screens for um, COVID compliance. You could use it to subvent income. Um, you could use it to pay your rent. You could use it for whatever you needed. We've just closed um, the Small Business Assistance Scheme. The closing date for that was on Wednesday. Again, another um, Department of Enterprise, Trade and Employment Scheme that we've been charged with rolling out. This again is a small grant. It's um, for businesses that weren't eligible for CRSS. And it's an initial grant of 4,000 euro and then a second grant again um, of 4,000 euro later in the year. But as I said, that scheme just closed on um, Wednesday. We have had um, some technical difficulties with it. It's been run centrally. And so the software associated with processing it has all come centrally. Um, and as a result, just we've had a couple of technical glitches which were actually resolved this week. So if you have applied for that grant and you haven't had your payment as yet, please bear with us. Um, we are in communication with everybody that had applied and we will get the money flowing to businesses again as quickly as possible. I know I signed an order this week for a number of businesses on that front. So um, the money is coming. On top of those kind of central supports that um, come via government to business, our local enterprise office has been absolutely central to some of the supports to the small and medium sized enterprises here in the county. Um, 
for those of you that aren't familiar, I suppose the Leo is a one-stop shop um, taking a business, um, an entrepreneur from inception, you know, concept side, all the way through a mentoring program and training. And hopefully, you know, uh, depending on the company's ambition, might spin off into EI for export. So last year, as we all know, was extremely difficult. And our Leo office very quickly transitioned into the online space. Um, within a matter of days, the whole business model had shifted online and I suppose as Anne-Marie mentioned that was partially I suppose thanks to the digital transformation that we were undergoing um, in the local authority we were able to pivot really really quickly and um, some of you be aware of the trading online voucher that the Leo office offer the trading online voucher is basically a voucher towards getting your business digital ready um, and to help it work in an e-commerce platform to say that scheme exploded last year is an understatement in 1919 or 2019 i think we issued something like 60 trading online vouchers and at last count um for 2020 we were up around the thousand mark so nationally there's a 950 percent increase in trading online vouchers which is a phenomenal uptake i suppose it's businesses recognizing that the need to have that online presence for the period of COVID and maybe into the future is certainly there um, and some businesses wouldn't have had the tools or the resources to do that and that's what the trading online voucher did it, it helped I suppose bridge those gaps and get you on to make you e-commerce ready I suppose while all of this was going on Brexit was bubbling away in the background um, a lot of it was I suppose drowned out by the noise of COVID but our Leo team had continued to offer the Brexit supports um, throughout the year and continue to offer some support in that area still so namely there was um are you brexit ready um which was a series of webinars and training sessions designed to help businesses um, that operated in multiple jurisdictions namely in the north or east or east west trade to the uk um to make sure that they knew the pitfalls they knew what they needed to do in terms of compliance with customs with fat numbers and all such and so forth again our Leo office have continued to run our mentoring and training programs. The mentoring program is a one on one support to um, a business owner or, um, to bring them through that development stage, be it to get them to develop out their business idea or it's, it can be to provide specific mentoring around um, financial supports, how to go about get it, drawing down finance, etc, how to make a pitch, myriad of supports there. Um, and we've also continued to run out training programs um, through 2020 and into 2021. We ran um, with participants, over a thousand participants at COVID specific training courses last year. Again, how to make sure or how to help your business survive during COVID. And we had over 5,000 participants last year at our just general training programs, which again would be, you know, how to curate your Instagram account to, um, you know, what is the best marketing uh, program or plan for your type of business. Andrea alluded to networking and how important that is with Fingal, uh, Fingal Chamber. Similarly with the Leo office, we run a, a lot of networking events and one of the most successful of those is the Female, female Enterprising Women's Network. It used to meet on a quarterly basis in locations throughout the county and it was at one in um, for Arnick, uh, God, it must be about 18 months ago at this stage for a lovely summer barbecue. It was a fabulous event, you know, meeting, meeting like-minded business people, chatting, um, keynote speaker and all the fine things that go with those networking events. But again, through COVID, we had to completely change our model. We now offer a monthly networking event. And to say um, it has been successful, it's an understatement. It has been oversubscribed at every call. We have hundreds of women registering for the monthly events and what has really evolved from it is these little spin out rooms from it so little clusters of industry clusters of like-minded business women coming together and thinking about how they might collaborate or how their idea might lead or help somebody else develop their idea really really fruitful piece of work and I suppose all of that culminated um, in our recent enterprise week uh, national enterprise week um, which we which we ran and Fingal Chamber were partners with us in that and ran a number of very, very successful events. We had over 3000 participants during the week of Enterprise Week, which is a testament, I suppose, to the work that's put in by the staff and um, both ourselves and in the chamber. And then I suppose on the interest in business to attend online events, I suppose myself personally, I find my diary is absolutely chock a block from nine o'clock to five o'clock or, or later with Zoom meetings. But what it does afford me 
and I'm sure it could be the same for you, is the opportunity to attend far more events and far more interesting or topics of interest uh, to you than it would be that if you, if you have to get into the car and drive for an hour to get to your destination and then come back again where a whole half a day is given up to attend an event. So I think as we start to emerge from COVID, um, we will be in this hybrid model of doing business. I think that there will be absolutely a need for in-person meetings. And I, for one, are really looking forward to those networking events where you can have a chat over a cup of coffee. Um, but I do think in the matter of doing business, the online event is here to stay as well um, in some shape or form. So kind of just building on the collaboration and the sense of camaraderie that there is amongst the business community, we last year came up with the idea of the Fingal In It Together Charter um, and Fingal Chamber, a partner organisation in that. So we developed this charter, which is really about businesses speaking to each other and being mindful of each other as we all try and weave our way through this crisis. Um, really, I suppose, it's if you are a business on, say, on a main street, on the Diamond in Malahide, for example, and you have a coffee franchise or you're, you know, you're a coffee operator and next door to you is a pharmacy, that you're mindful of your queuing, you're mindful of you know, your neighbour business next door to you. And I've seen that work really, really well with a couple of businesses actually in the Diamond um, and the butchers and the coffee shop have worked really well and the shopping centre worked really well in just figuring out how to move people safely in and out of their respective businesses and make the consumer feel safe. So that's kind of one of the elements of uh, the charter. Another element of it is, I suppose, trying to shop locally for business, for business to shop locally. And I mean, I was very pleased to come across uh, one publican who had bought his screens from a local supplier. I'm really, really proud of the fact that the guy up the road was able to provide all of his COVID um, safety screening. Um, so, you know, it's things like that. It's businesses helping businesses to survive. So at the moment, we have 253 businesses registered. Um, we have a landing page on our fingal.ie forward slash business. And um, so we have a Fingal In It Together charter page there where all the businesses have a free directory listing. Um, as part of that program last summer, you may, if you're resident in the area as well as working in the area, you may have gotten a brochure through your door highlighting all that there is to offer in your town or village. We felt that this was a really, really important small thing that the council could do to help people that live in our towns and villages appreciate what, what businesses and I suppose other amenities are on their doorstep. We've been so busy for so long going to work, coming from work, be it in a city centre location or wherever it might be, that sometimes we just need to lift our heads a little bit and look around us and see, you know, did you know there was a, a local hardware shop? Did you know that there's a beautiful florist down the road that can deliver? You know, so it was really just bringing that um, direct to the residents of the county because we felt and we were experiencing real consumer sentiment. People wanted to shop local. People really wanted to do right by their local businesses. And if that was, you know, buying the bunch of flowers from the local flower seller while you were in the supermarket or, you know, after you'd gotten your cup of coffee, after you'd been for your walk, you know, little things like that. And I think businesses appreciated it. Um, love to hear more from you about that. And just, you know, is it something that we should continue to, to do with you? Really, really happy to take your views on board on that. So as we moved into the Christmas period, then again, we were we had opened, we closed, we'd opened again. You know, it's a bit of a bit of a yo-yo journey for business. Um, normally, we would run a number of Christmas markets. And actually, last year, we had planned to expand them to a, more than the couple of locations we had had previously. But we just couldn't make it happen with the restrictions. It was, there was too much uncertainty for those artisan type craft producers to know um, where they're actually going to be able to um, sell their product that they produced. But we did. We did an online Christmas shop, I suppose you'd call it, and we had our finger all in it together uh, for Christmas. Um, you may have noticed or heard some of the Christmas music uh, playing in our towns and villages to try and create a bit of atmosphere. Um, I know some people were sick to the absolute death of it by the end of it, but it was an important intervention, I suppose, um, to help just create a little bit of atmosphere in trying times. But the online um, Christmas shop worked really well. It helped you and some of you bring your products to an audience that may not have been there before. Um, it worked as well for the wood turner who operates out of his shed to the business that has an Instagram page and a Facebook page. Our website facilitated just ringing the wood turner or click through from our website directly then into 
your business's website. So we felt it was really successful. Um, and I think it's something that, you know, we will continue to run into tandem possibly with our physical markets again, as we move hopefully back into more outdoor live events. Anne-Marie men mentioned summer 2021. Um, and I suppose we had some measures that will roll over from 2020. Um, last year, we ran a, a Parklet partner scheme. So essentially a Parklet is, um, has been up to now a decked area that takes over a parking space in a town centre location. Uh, we advertised that scheme last year and we've just put out our press uh, release yesterday evening on it again for this year. Um, so we invite businesses or collaborations. So if there's a number of businesses located close by that they apply if they're interested for a parklet, um, we will then survey it, I survey the space to see if it's suitable from a traffic movement point of view. Um, and if it is, we remove the parking and we put in a parklet. Um, so the council provide the infrastructure. The businesses then sign up to an MOU where the businesses then are responsible for the maintenance and um, providing the furniture in the parklet and the cleaning of it. Um, so it worked really well um, for a number of the hospitality um, side of the house, I suppose, um, in, in, in enabling people to dine outdoors and give a bit of security and a delineation of a business's dining space. So as I said, we've just launched that um, again yesterday. We've tied it in, we've rolled it in um, to a suite of, I suppose, economic stimulus measures for um, getting business open and getting business ready for summer 2021. We have relaunched again our shop front, our shop front improvement scheme, which is essentially a small grant towards providing paint or other materials, you know, if you want to um, give your premises um, a fresh look. Um, one of the really important schemes that we are um, charged with um, administering is the Fault Ireland Outdoor Dining Scheme. So when we did our press yesterday, we felt really important that we wrap all of the things in together. So the Outdoor Dining Scheme, really nice scheme. It's a grant of up to €4,000 uh, for a business for the provision of out, outdoor dining furniture. So it's tables and chairs, it's windbreakers, it's parasols, it's heaters. You know, there's a myriad of things that are eligible for it. Um, the real beauty of this scheme is that it is retrospective in nature. So if you have any expenditure in that kind of area going back to April last year, um, it's, it's eligible. It's, you know, produce your receipts. It's an online application form. You produce your receipts and um, we'll make the payment to you then. And the scheme is open until the 30th of September of this year. So if you're thinking about furniture, certainly check out the FAQs on the scheme and look and see, um, does your business fit? The, I suppose the terms and conditions of the scheme are that it must be for outdoor dining. So if you're a takeaway only facility and that doesn't offer a meal, um, you're not eligible. It's eligible to uh, businesses that um, offer food to the public. So if you have a golf club, um, if you operate a golf club and it's members only, um, unfortunately, that's not eligible. But if you have a golf club um, that has a public element with, you know, if you have a bar with bar food, like, you know, a gastro pub type element, you are eligible. So, you know, there's a little bit of nuance to the scheme, but for the most part, um, the majority of businesses are eligible. So I'd encourage you again to either check out it's fingal.ie forward slash outdoor dining. Um, and you'll find all the information there about parklets, shop front improvement and our outdoor dining scheme. We're trying to put it all into the one place. But if in doubt, um, as you can always email us or the chamber directly, um, our general email address is econdev, so it's E-C-O-N-D-E-V at fingal.ie. Or as I said, if I'm sure David won't mind taking a few queries uh, post event if, if, if needs be, and he'll, he'll get them to us in time. So talking a lot about shop local, it's been really, really important. And as I said, we have that um, consumer sentiment um, with our, our, our businesses. Um, our Leo office ran a really successful uh, shop Fingal campaign in the run up to Christmas, again, um, through print media and radio advertising and digital promotion, really important. Um, we then as well last year supported a social enterprise, a really clever idea, a young guy came up with this idea of um, shoplocal.irish, um, it's an app, um, so mobile enabled, basically allows you to geolocate um, a business um, or a product um, to your location. This was developed uh, during the first lockdown. So if you remember, you know, 
not very little was open it was um delivery only or possibly click and collect for food so this business this idea emerged um, so that i could search um for a florist um that did deliveries um, and could geolocate that within five kilometers of my location and they give you a list of businesses i think at the moment there's something like 500 businesses uh, registered on it all mainly all fingal businesses we have had huge interest from other local authorities and other counties um, chamber of commerce or their leo offices wanting to take on this app so we've had um some discussions with um, the Department of Enterprise to see, you know, is it something that could be rolled out nationally? I think it's a really nifty little tool. Um, check it out, um, you know, sign up if, if you think it would be of benefit to your uh, business. And I mean, pleased to say it was a, a winner under the Chambers Ireland Awards last year, which was a great recognition of um, this guy's work, you know, really, really fantastic. Key driver um, of our local economy in Fingal is tourism. Um, and those of you in the Hoth Malhide um, area, uh, Port Marnock, Baldoyle, Sutton, you know, you, you know this, <laughs> you're living and breathing it every day, um, particularly as Anne-Marie has said, with all the visitors that we've had um, to our coastal towns and villages. But look, we one in four jobs that we support are in the tourism um, sector, that the Fingal supports are in the tourism sector, either through direct employment in the tourism trade or through the service industry that supports that. So really we're, you know, it's an ever evolving space. Um, we try and encourage active travel where possible. I think um, the Fingal Coastal Way um, is going to be absolutely transformative in the tourism offering that Fingal has. Um, it will be of huge benefit to residents. It already is. You can see the amount of people using um, the Port Marnock to uh, Val Doyle uh, Greenway at the moment. I mean, it's hugely, hugely popular. Um, and that's going to continue, you know, for residents to move about the county in a safe way. But it'll put Fingal on the map from a tourism point of view. Um, as you may know, we're part of the broader tourism, uh, Dublin tourism proposition. So our tagline for with Fall to Ireland is Dublin surprising by nature. And we are the nature in that tagline you know we have everything that you could possibly want you can have your city break you know you can do um the city sites but you can also be on the coast in 20 minutes or less you know enjoying what our beautiful towns and villages have to offer so we do that in a number of ways obviously we work very much in partnership with uh fall to ireland and we work hugely with uh fingal chamber we actually set up last year in response to COVID a tourism um steering group I suppose you'd call it of um, businesses in the tourism hospitality sector from Fingal Chamber and with ourselves just to try and see how best we could support those businesses um, as they were trying to emerge from COVID. We ran um, a series of um, online and digital campaigns for the three month summer period last year um, we took I suppose a very significant uh, piece of radio, radio advertising out and we, have, we were featured on the Dermot and Dave uh, show on Today FM um, for a week last year and uh, lots of Fingal Chamber businesses um, gave prizes as part of that promotional campaign, really, really successful. What I liked about it was it got, I suppose, the local message out uh, to our, you know, what everything Fingal has to offer to a broad national audience and particularly the two guys, Dermot and Dave, both live in the area. So they were really good ambassadors for selling all that Fingal has to offer. We do a myriad of other things, as you can see there, where we've lit up our, our buildings um, through, through COVID. We had messages of hope. We had greening for St. Patrick's Day. You know, Christmas time, you would have seen some of the projections that we had on our public buildings, um, just to try again, generate a little bit of atmosphere, have people talking about what we're doing here in Fingal, um, either as a resident or as a visitor to Fingal. We are our best ambassadors. Our residents are our best ambassadors and it's word of mouth that really does bring a story to life. So we use our social media platforms. I love Fingal Dublin, uh, Twitter account and Instagram account, and then our Dublin Coast and Fields, which is hugely important uh, to us as well because we really recognize uh, the wonderful food provenance that we have in the county and food tourism is really important. Like I remember, God, it must be two years ago now at this stage, uh, sitting in a restaurant in one of our coastal restaurants and uh, the owner of the restaurant very proudly telling me that the new potatoes that he had on the menu tonight were from Rush, you know, so those little things make a difference to um, the person who's experiencing Fingal for the first time. 
So I think these are kind of small supports, often not seen by everybody, but they're very impactful. Please, no, I'm nearly done. Um, on the broader e economic development side of the house, um, we, Fingal are a partner in the Dublin Belfast Economic Corridor. We're one of eight local authorities um, located from Dublin City Council all the way up to uh, Belfast City Council. So it literally runs along the M1, a really important um, economic corridor. Um, I suppose harnessing built on the infrastructure that's there, but it's about creating and stimulating clusters generating employment as appropriate along that corridor, learning from each other as well. Um, and we will, we had a launch event on the 24th of March. Our next stage now will be an engagement piece, which will be reaching out to um, the business community, wanting to hear from you in the various sectors as to what this corridor can do for you. So we've already had, I suppose, representations from the chamber on that, um, looking to be involved and for members of the chamber to be involved and we'll certainly be following up on that. Um, we have also run a sustainable Fingal um, support program for sustainability ideas for SMEs. So again, building on that climate action agenda, helping you transition into a more carbon friendly, if not carbon neutral environment. Again, we have a guide, we have a whole suite of supports on our website, so I would I'd encourage you to try and check them out. Um, we also have had developed a number of years ago, Fingal Skills Strategy. We are now into an implementation phase of that. That's really looking at, we did a mapping exercise, I suppose, looking at what skills there are in the county, what employers need and trying to bridge the gap. So we have an implementation group now established and that is chaired by Siobhan Kinsler, that I'm sure many of you know. So she will really drive that forward for us. Um, again, we have multiple stakeholders at that. So feel free again to feed in on, on those kind of skills gaps um, if you feel it might be a benefit to you. I'm going to stop talking now. You'd be delighted to hear. Um, I'm going to, if I can, if you bear with me for one moment, I will share a video just of what, um, I suppose, what we try to do when we're pitching Fingal to the international market and invest, trying to encourage businesses to invest in Fingal. So if you bear with me one more moment, hopefully I can do that. Right, that's me done. Happy to take any questions. Thanks a million. Thanks very much, Emer, for that presentation. Um, we'll jump right into the uh, Q&A. Um, I see uh, that Les O'Reilly's written just a note of thanks to the staff on the ground who provide a great service to Malahide. I appreciate this increase in volume presents challenges, which hopefully can be addressed as we approach the summer period. So less a question, more a uh, uh, positive comment there from Les. And there's a couple of other questions coming in. But first, I might ask Anne-Marie, uh, Amory, without asking you to get out your crystal ball or anything, how do you think um, or how do you see uh, business being this summer and the, for the summer of 2021 with as we kind of supposed to live with COVID? Um, um, I, the agenda we're working to, I suppose, in, in Fingal is that it will be an outdoor summer, you know, so we need to 
um, put more of our public space available for, for the communities who need to get out of their house and have somewhere to, to dwell and enjoy some of the, the, the amenities and the businesses and what they offer. Um, also for businesses to help you trade because unfortunately it won't be back to normal, particularly in the, the earliest mm. stages of summer. I mean, I don't know any more than you do in terms of what the precise reopening plan will be. Um, and I suppose it's disappointing to hear today that, you know, there, at least on the news, they're reporting that there could be some delay. But I know um, it will be about helping businesses do what is safe to do. Um, so if you have any initiatives for doing some of your business outdoors, please come and talk to us. Um, Ema mentioned the scheme that were announced yesterday. But that's what it is about, I suppose. Um, if you can trade and do your trade outdoors, that's that's likely where it will be. And I guess Click and Collect is back and back again, or will be back again quite soon. So anything we can do to help and promote your service and your business, we're certainly available to do that. Um, we would we would like to see, I suppose, that we can get the transition of people who are visiting Fingon naturally, staycations and staying local, the day trip, all of that type of activity, which is guaranteed for this summer. We want to make sure that those that come to our coast, for example, have an opportunity to spend money in the area. And again, you know, anything we can do about that. Importantly, from, from our perspective, and I think it's important to you as well, we have to keep Fingal as a good place to, to dwell and to visit. So operationally, I suppose, um, the onus is on me to make sure that we have our guys out on the ground um, dealing with that increased number of people, as Les mentioned, to the county. It's, um, it's going to be difficult and challenging to keep up. But um, we, we have a programme, as I mentioned earlier, of public toilet provision, little bin provision, benches provision, in order to, um, to I suppose, make the place comfortable and encourage more people to come back. Um, and then just to make sure that the, the link between those visitors and businesses are well established. I'm anxious to get the likes of the casino and Malahide reopened, you know, which brings people closer to the town centre and ultimately, you know, when there's an offering in terms of, of food um, available, which will be quite soon, we're hoping. I think, I think those visitors will come for that attraction and then ultimately spend their money in the local area. Um, again, from a health and safety perspective, we'll be available to help with queuing. So I suppose it's, it's less people in your shop and making sure that they can queue safely outdoors if that's what's, what's needed and we can assist with that. Um, so a lot of work underway. We will be bringing a plan about how our towns and villages could be improved to, to provide more public space. We're doing a town by town review across the county um, with, I suppose, reacting to applications from business as well. So it, it's that, that broader link to make sure that we're doing what you need done and that we can do it on time to allow you trade um, safely. Thanks, David. Thanks very much. Uh, question for Emer then. Um, Emer, in your opinion, uh, do you see any opportunity to hold events later in the summer? Is there any indication that I suppose if all things go well, what attendance numbers might be? Is events are, I suppose, a key driver for tourism in the area? Really good question. Um, yeah, it's, and it's a really tricky one as well. I think we're all watching uh, with bated breath um, at what's going on or what's planned in the UK at the moment. Um, I think there's a concert planned in the coming weeks for the attendees of 5,000 at it. Um, so um, at the moment, there's no kind of outdoor events permitted. Um, we would be working towards probably Q3 into Q4. So I don't think the summer season will make it um, just in terms of this is just what we're hearing through public health advice in terms of, um, I suppose, vaccination numbers and that, that balance between the population being vaccinated and people emerging um, and coming into large social gatherings. And um, so I'm more hopeful for having a really, really good year next year. Um, I think there's an appetite there. And what we have been charged with, um, and I'm really know more about this, I suppose, as well, is Minister Martin has been asking us, um, Minister Martin being the Minister for Tourism and the Arts to look at spaces, our outdoor spaces that we could create um, event spaces outdoors for smaller type events. So um, we're actively looking at that at the moment. There was a scheme announced for local government to provide, you know, kind of that entertainment space that can be used by 
uh, local. And again, I suppose it's looking at events and it's also looking at trying to support the arts industry and you know local artists and seeing um, can we marry the two together. So again, I think it's outdoor. It's outdoor in small numbers. Um, we have no, um, I suppose, view of what or no sight of what those numbers might be as yet. Uh, but we're as eager as John is, I think, uh, to to get events up and running as soon as we possibly can. And as soon as it's safe to do so, we, we'll be there. Uh, the next question I see here is from Anna Howard. Anna, I might try and bring you in if you'd like to ask your uh, question. So you should be able to talk there. Yeah, hi, David. And um, thanks, Amory and Jimer, today for your interesting briefing. And it's it's really kind of an inspiring to see, I suppose, what the county has to offer. And um, I was just wondering if there has been any consideration given to getting some of the Enterprise um, Belfast train services to stop at Malahide. And, um, you know, it's probably not needed during the summer months or at the weekends, but it might be something that businesses could market um, during the off peak times and something that could be attractive to the, the Northern visitors. Thanks. Thanks, Anna. Um, thanks, Anna. That, that's a really good question. And I suppose that particular train has focused a lot in our conversations in with the Dublin Belfast corridor um, and our partners. So um, it is something I think that could be explored um, and we'd be bringing, I suppose, some requests to other stakeholders, you know, um, the likes of Irish Rail, ultimately in terms of an action plan for the corridor. So let me take that back because I, I do think it's a very relevant point. It worked very well for the likes of the, the cricket matches, et cetera. So yeah, thanks, thanks for your comment. It, it, it's a valuable one and we'll certainly work on that principle and see what might be achieved there. We're just going 10 o'clock, but we might just take another couple of questions as they are coming through and, and stay with this for the next few minutes if people want to hang on. Um, Catherine Flanagan has said, thank you for the Trojan work to date on waste management and litter removal, your commitment to, and your commitment to additional bins. Are there plans to increase different types of bins, you know, separate for compostable, recycling, plastics, etc., to work with the food outlets for a joint approach to waste reduction. The increase in takeaway food and drinks is already creating litter problems in health, and this may be likely to worsen uh, when the outdoor dining increases. Are you considering working closely with the food businesses to address this? I can come in on that, David. Um, you're, you're right, there is a conflict with providing more bins all of the time and our responsibilities under climate action. I mean, it's something we considered, you know, in terms of meeting the immediate need because of COVID um, versus the longer term or the more immediate need to deal with um, recycling or more recycling in our towns and villages. So the answer is yes, we are going to put segregated bins into our regional parks. Um, we have, I suppose, invested in more traditional bins in our towns and villages on a needs must basis just to deal with that little problem problem but that is the direction of travel um, in order to I suppose increase recycling and, and encourage more responsibility by by the waste creator I suppose um, in terms of businesses um, we've we have visited a lot of businesses who have increased their takeaway service in recent weeks looking for their support and help to deal with the littering problem so as, as I mentioned earlier um, we do need help with it and um, we can't um, deal with it on our own so yeah um, that partnership is really important so it's from our perspective it's it's a monitoring enforcement and then management issue so we're working with through all three arms there to try and improve the situation everywhere and um, i might just deal with benches because I, I did see a written question on benches there um, there's a big demand for us to put benches out um, across the county because people are out walking more they want to, they want to um, dwell maybe with a coffee or whatever in various locations. And that's completely understandable. And it's important for those who, who may need to rest, for particularly the elderly, for example, as they're out for a walk. Turn that into the nighttime experience where people will, may sit and use those benches to, to drink or whatever they might be and leave the litter behind them. Um, so that's the dilemma we have. 
So we're trying to put benches in the right places that are less vulnerable to that antisocial behaviour. So that review is, is well underway and we do have a plan which we'll, we'll talk about through our councillors in, in the coming weeks. Um, but again, I don't want to punish those who need the benches and who, you know, who, who find them very valuable versus the, the issue which I mentioned earlier about more congregation as a result of COVID. So I suppose we do have to balance our actions um, and accept that there's more people outdoors, which can be inconvenient. You know, there's no doubt it can be inconvenient for everybody who is trying to do business or to live close by. But we're, we're I suppose we're aware of the problem and we're just trying to balance the response um, in a way that, that suits all our citizens. You um, another question there in relation to the Fingal Coastal Way, and can you speak maybe just elaborate a little bit of the opportunities that that might open up when it, once it's complete? Well, I guess it's it's going. There will be more visitors in all our coastal towns and villages, so it's it's the business opportunity associated with increased footfall, um, and the fact that it's a, a greenway of such such length means that people will be looking for lunch and for refreshments um, and perhaps more do you know and um, happy to hear any ideas i suppose the key thing is to understand it's a project that's committed to it's well underway and um, it has national support there is more funding required nationally to deliver it but um, i think everybody's excited by it so um, I'd, I'd ask businesses to get ready for it you know because we've tried to route it in a way um, and the route options are on display at the moment and available on to our fingal.ie website into where we're consulting on it so have a look at the routes and um, you'll see where where the people the more visitors will will end up um, and there should be there definitely will be opportunities I think, in terms of the spend. I think there's probably opportunities for the leisure industry as well you know um cycle tours uh water-based activities you know there's a whole myriad guided walks you know coming from the Greenway into some of our heritage properties and things like that. So there's a myriad of opportunities there, but as Anne-Marie says, it will drive tourism. Uh, so, uh, you know, the businesses associated with the tourism and hospitality sector. And I think um, the retail experience in our towns and villages, because you get something different. You know, if you stop off for your lunch um, in Malahide or Hoth, you know, if you go into one of the, the retail outlets, then, you know, you, you find something unique there that you wouldn't get in a multiple or you wouldn't get in one of the large, larger, um, premises so I think there's opportunity for all in the development of the coastal way. Thanks. Would you have any commentary around um, I suppose a perceived increase in antisocial behaviour in some of the public spaces and being able to maintain that quality of the environment and safety for those residents and visitors? I suppose what I'd say on that is um, right now is different you know right now is different for business different for the community there's no sports clubs open. There's no activities for young people. So we don't want to overreact. You know, we just want to manage it as well we can. Um, that's not to say it's easy to live besides. So ultimately, um, interaction with the Gardaí and I'll be meeting with them later this morning, you know, just in terms of what they can do to assist. Um, and I suppose conversations with our young people as well um, in terms of what's acceptable and what isn't. I don't like wasting money in repairing um, fences and other things that get broken down because of some event like, such as happened in Malahide Domain. That's a waste of our resources. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a problem at the moment when there's no alternative. So I say, I don't want to overreact, but we do need to try and manage it. And we have just more people out on the ground um, and trying to address it as best we can um, to try and minimize it. Um, but um, let's all work together on that as well in terms of if there's any interventions you think will work, um, let me know. But we've been trying to secure, have security, monitoring it and definitely antisocial behaviour. Ultimately, we need the guards to, to deal with that. Um, so yeah, I suppose it's it's not the normal because it's an exceptional time and hopefully it will calm down ultimately, um, but we're doing what we can in these abnormal circumstances. I might just finish up with one last uh, question this morning. Um, and it's relation to, I suppose, what might be uh, seen as a, a positive challenge is uh, in relation to over-tourism 
And um, do, can you see that having any negative effects on small businesses or on the villages um, over the coming, coming months or coming years? Um, well, I suppose we're, we're conscious that Malahide and Hoth are quite busy areas and we do invest accordingly to try and um, have the services match the number of visitors to the areas. The likes of the northern towns and villages probably would look for more um, and they, they are very supportive and I suppose needs that additional foot, footfall to be, to be successful, particularly outside of the summer period, you know, to have a year round offer. Um, in terms of over tourism traffic management, I think I think the our investment in active travel will assist. Uh, we, we would like to see more people come into the county in using sustainable transport modes and therefore not having that traffic impact. I mean, the phenomenal increase in bleeper bikes last year um, was amazing to see. You know, um, it went from, from what was a couple of hundred up to several thousand. I think peaked at about seven or eight thousand bleeper bikes being used in the county. That was mostly people coming from the city out to to Fingal to enjoy the, the scenery. So that type of sustainable travel, I think, will work better. Um, but the over tourism where I suppose locals fear going into their town centre because of the, the level of activity um, is something we'd like to avoid. But it's a fine balance between, um, you know, sending people away and then at the same time needing footfall in order to create economic activity. So, um, yeah, happy to, again. It's, it would be a problem. I think some of our towns would love to have and then conscious that there's there's other towns that may find it problematic. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Catherine Flanagan has come back in and said uh, if she's had the earlier question in relation to the uh, food waste management and has come back to say she agrees with the partnership approach would be great and uh, is uh, looking forward to engaging and sure the community will commit um, to that as well. Um, so that's brilliant. So we're going to have to close up for um, today. If anyone has any further questions, they can email them through to us here in the chamber. It's events at fingalchamber.ie and we'll do our best to get them to the most appropriate person. Um, I'd first like to thank Fingal Chamber President Andrea Malloy and also Fingal County Councils Amory Farley and Emer O'Gorman for accepting our invite to speak with local businesses in this webinar series over the past few days. If you found this event useful or if you've learned anything, please share those details with us via the form that we'll send and that you receive via email. And to support our work and allow us to keep hosting these business briefings and forums, please consider chamber membership or recommending it to those in your network who you feel may be interested. If you refer a colleague or business and they sign up, we'll send you a token of our appreciation. You can go to fingalchamber.ie slash recommend to do that. And for everyone, I encourage you to check out our upcoming activities. You can go to the chamber website. That's fingalchamber.ie to find out more. Thanks again for joining us. Hope you all stay safe. All the best.